stabbing of Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel, who is a pastor of a Christian Assyrian church in Australia. This is shocking as a preacher, as a live streamer, to see this happen on live stream is absolutely crazy. They were, he was uh, talking about Islam exposing Islam on TikTok, and they were making threats saying, you only have a week or two to live. Nobody really thought they were going to do anything. And then here comes a 16-year-old boy in the middle of a live stream, pulls a knife and starts stabbing him just right there live on stream. Thankfully, he did survive. It was an act of God that the knife didn't fully come out of its sheath. And we're going to cover that and show you. And then I want to show you the history of Islam. Might be surprising to you. It's definitely demonic. It's definitely dark. So here we go. Let's jump into this video. Okay, this is the first clip is the stabbing. I'm not going to show the unfiltered, unblurred version. You can go see if you want. I just think it's too startling for most people to watch. So I'm going to show just where they pause it before it happens. So it's not really that graphic. What I'm going to show, I do want you to see the thing that this young man did and then him smirking after. This is so demonic. And again, as a preacher, this is crazy to be like live preaching and then somebody run up on stage and just start stabbing you is pretty startling. But let's watch this video here. So here he is teaching just to give you context. And this man, 16 year old man, just walks up in the middle of his live stream while he's teaching. This is a very well known pastor here. And you'll see what happens. <laughs> So I'm showing the version where they don't show, but he ends up stabbing him a whole bunch of times. When he pulled the knife, by the grace of God, the knife did not pop out. So towards the end, in the full video, which I won't show, you'll see that he looks down at the knife and realizes it doesn't come out and then pulls the knife out and does end up stabbing him a few times. And he was in the hospital. And I want to show you what he said about this once he got released from the hospital. It's going to shock you, his response to this young man. <laughs> holding the boy down. He ends up saying, why is he talking about my prophet? So this guy is Muslim here, and he's attacking him because he was speaking against Islam. I see blood on his pants. So I just want to show you here where he's smiling. I'm not sure why they're blurring his face. See if they're gonna show. What the people are praying you're gonna come and do this? Yeah, gonna. So here you can see right here. Here's where he's smirking, literally smiling. I mean, straight demonic. The full version where it's not blurred shows him just full on smiling, smiling about what he just did, trying to take the <laughs> life. And then we'll see here. Um, the alleged attacker, who police is, say is 16, was quickly restrained by parishioners. And recorded asking, why is he insulting my prophet? I declared that it was a terrorist incident. We believe there are elements that are... And the reason being is this is what Islam teaches. Islam teaches if you don't agree, you don't believe, you speak against Muhammad, their religion, their God... Then they kill you, they behead you, they stab you. It's a violent, cult-like religion. And this is, he was just acting out what the Quran teaches. Satisfied in terms of religious, uh, motivated extremism. And this is one of the reasons why they were mad and they attacked this pastor, is because he said this. You know all this. Islam flourished and expanded with the sword. That's why on the flag of Saudi Arabia is green with two swords crossing. That's how it went with the sword. Jesus said, my sword is my word and my word is love. You flourish through love, not by chopping heads. You flourish with love. I don't 
want to offend no Muslim. That's not my intention. But this is what their book literally says. And Muslims will be in the comment section right now saying, we don't teach violence, we don't teach hate. You don't obviously know the Quran very good. The Quran literally teaches to behead and to kill those that don't believe in, in what they teach. So don't tell me we believe in your Jesus. You don't. My Jesus is God revealed in the flesh. He was crucified to save the whole world. This is my Jesus. There is, in him, it's not negotiable area. We can't sit and say, let's come up with a solution. Now, this is the solution and the only solution. You better believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is God himself. He was crucified. He was buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. For he is God revealed in the flesh. Period. Amen. Absolutely. Now, this is what, to me, is the most powerful thing of this whole situation, is what he says, his message to this young man, the 16-year-old young man that went in there, this Islamic extremist that stabbed him on live stream. And I don't know if anything like this has ever happened where you have a pastor or a preacher that has such a large following and, and is so viral getting stabbed live on stream. This is just completely startling coming from a pastor and a preacher who does live streams all the time preaching, not just in churches, but also in my own studio. But this is his message. Listen to this. This might challenge you as a Christian. Some of you are so petty, you can't forgive your in-laws. You can't forgive your friend. You can't forgive your family member. You can't even forgive the person on Facebook that was making fun of you. Yet listen to his message to the young man that stabbed him. Just This is, my, this is absolutely mind-blowing. Listen. Oh, wrong video. Here we go. Um, uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, uh, this was his first message after... Uh, being in the hospital and his first statement to social media. Covering very quickly, we thank the Lord Jesus, so there is no no need to be worried or concerned. Whatever has happened to me personally, I thank the Lord Jesus. That's a huge blessing for me. He said, whatever has happened to me is a huge blessing for me. And guys, this was the mentality they had in the book of Acts. They literally said thank, that thank, they were thankful that they were found worthy to suffer for Christ. Like that is called suffering well. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I could say this about someone that tried to kill me and stab me. He says, I thank God for this. I, uh, I forgive whoever has done this uh, act. And I say to him, you're my son. I love you. Wow. And I will always pray for you. And whoever sent you to do this, I forgive them as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Uh, and a piece of advice to our, all, uh, our beloved faithfuls. I need you to act christ-like the lord jesus never taught us to fight the lord jesus never taught us to retaliate the lord jesus never said to us an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth the lord jesus said never return evil with evil but return evil with good so this now they're going to go into one of the guys that started a riot because they actually wanted they were holding that young man down and there was a riot outside saying give us him i mean they want they wanted pretty much kill him. So he's saying, hey, that's not how we respond. Calling this young man saying, this is my son and God bless you. I mean, this should challenge every single one of us. This religion is a demonic religion. Islam is a demonic religion. It's a cult-like religion. And I just wanna share with you, first of all, that I commend Bishop Mar, Mar Emanuel. I don't know his theology. I'm not advocating his theology or I haven't listened to him enough to even know. So I don't know if his theology is proper and correct or not, because I don't know enough about him. So this is definitely not advocating everybody go listen to his stuff. But I just think this is such a Christ-like mentality to say, I forgive you. Even though you stabbed me, you tried to kill me, I still forgive you. Well. Maybe you don't know the history of Islam. Islam started in Saudi Arabia in the seventh century under the teaching of Muhammad, who Muslims do believe is God's final prophet. Um, the name of the religion is Islam, and the people who follow it are Muslims. And the Muslim God is Allah. This is their God. But I want you to listen to how it started, how demonic, and I'm saying the word demonic, the origins are. Muha uh, Muhammad claimed that a supernatural being visited him in a cave while he was meditating and told him to read. But Muhammad told the spirit that he couldn't read, yet two more times the spirit told Muhammad to read. Finally, he told Muhammad to recite and gave him some verses to memorize. When this first encounter was over, Muhammad thought he was visited by a demon. So the initial start of Islam is Muhammad thinking a demon visited me, and he became depressed and suicidal. But his wife and her cousin convinced him he was visited by the angel Gabriel and that he was a prophet. Muhammad continued to have these visitations throughout his lifetime. And these visitations are demons coming to him. The same way Joseph Smith, demons came to him and he started Mormonism. 
demons are coming to Muhammad, and this is how the start of Islam. Literally, this religion was started by a demon. Three years later, Muhammad began pre preaching in the city of Mecca. There was no God but Allah. Most people in Mecca who worship idols scoffed at his message, but he gathered a few disciples and some who were persecuted. In 622, Muhammad and his followers moved to Medina, which a large Jewish population, and were more receptive to monotheism, which is the belief in one God. This journey is called Hijra. After seven years in Medina, Muhammad's followers grew, and they were strong enough to conquer Mecca, where Muhammad preached until he died in 632. And then after that, his after his death, his disciples rapidly spread throughout Europe, parts of Asia, North Africa, the Middle East, and they were conquering basically territory by territory. And they were telling people, you either convert to Islam or pay a large fee. And if you can't pay the fee, you either became a slave or you were executed. And Islam was dominating, became a dominant world religion through most of the Middle East and North Africa through violence. This is how it started through violence. So what you have to understand is this religion is a demonic religion. This is why this young man was fueled by demons. I mean, who else is going to tell you to go stab a pastor, go stab a Christian preacher than demons? And then Bishop Mari Mari's response is we need to forgive and love him. And that's what Jesus teaches. But this is just so crazy, this response. It really challenges me to not be so petty about people that talk bad about me on social media or say things like, well, guys, we have to be quick to forgive. If he could forgive someone that stabbed him, tried killing him, taking his life, if it wasn't the grace of God, the knife didn't come out, he would have killed him, yet he was willing to forgive. Who do you need to forgive today? Who do you need to say, I forgive you, that if that has hurt me? No one's tried stabbing you. No one's tried killing you. This is a demonic cult-like religion and that has about 2 billion followers. It's the second largest religion. Christianity is about 2.4 billion. And then it, Islam is about 2 billion people. But it's absolutely horrific that this religion teaches the thing that it teaches and then just goes after people with violence. This is a terrorist organization that we've normalized here in America that we now say we need to respect. Guys, Muhammad never rose from the dead. Jesus is the only true one that rose from the dead. The grave is empty. There is no empty grave in Mecca. Sorry to tell you, he did not raise from the dead. There is only one true God, and that is Jesus Christ. Let me know what you think of this whole situation. I really wanted to highlight his response to this guy that killed him because I, I believe it challenges all of us to just forgive and to be loving with people and kind with people even when they do the worst things possible to us. Uh, make sure you check out my live tab. I have all my teachings and preachings there. If you don't realize, I only do a couple reactions, and then all my teaching and preaching is in the live tab. Also, pray about becoming a monthly partner. We do weekly weekly prayer meetings at 1.30 p.m. on Thursday. We are also live Monday at 6, Tuesday at 6, and Thursday at noon. Love and appreciate you guys. I want to know your comment down below, what you think about this. And also, I'm interested in what you think about Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel. I've never listened to his teaching. I don't really know his theology, so I'd be interested if you know about him or maybe his ministry has reached you. Let me know in the comments. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.